Hi, thanks for joining me today. Now I'm in the Peak District on this uh, on this trip. I've come up to Higator again. I've come with a friend of mine who's doing some medium format film photography with a bunch of different cameras. So he's uh, over in the distance taking a picture of something anyway. So we've got sunshine. Well, we've got a mixed bag. It's showers at the moment. There's a little bit of sun coming through here and there. and got some quite moody clouds as well so hoping it's going to be good for some for some uh, moody images but, uh, I'm just sheltering behind a big boulder at the moment because it's quite breezy and uh, I'm just eyeing up some compositions and there's a nice collection of rocks behind me I'll just turn around so you can just about see them there I've got the sun right in the face which is good for lighting up those rocks but not so good because my camera's in my backpack so I'll just have to find something and get set up and then hang around for the light but it's good that the light's coming and going that at least there's some some options for for photography here and I've got uh, some colour and some black and white film stock with me so should have some uh, reasonable options anyway I'll uh, press on see if I can find some uh, compositions and catch up with you them in a bit I didn't get an image at the rocks in the end. We decided to carry on and head towards Higator, which is over on my right hand side. But I found quite an interesting uh, setup here, which is um, some dry stone walls, which form a nice right angle with a really good leading line. And I'll just swing the camera around so you can have a look at it. So you can see the wall cutting from left to right, and then it uh, follows the horizon line. And there's a there's a there's a gate that just uh, adds a bit of interest there and then there's all these grasses in the foreground so I've already set the the camera up with a landscape orientation image and I'm just waiting for the for the right light now I mean to be honest the the lights coming and going so as you can see just just here now it's uh, it's illuminating it up nicely so I think I'm going to go for a Kodak Ektar with this one and I'll, I might just throw in a, a black and white as well with a yellow filter but uh, we've got some nice colours and we've got some nice texture so I'll get some film loaded and we'll get this one get this one taken. Well, I've got one uh, black and white shot and I've got another one on uh, Kodak Ektar. I've got some really nice light with those with those two shots. I'm just uh, trying to get one more. But the sun appears to have gone behind the bank of cloud that's, be, that's behind the camera. So I'm um, not sure what's going to happen with this one, but I've got two in the bag anyway, so I'm not too disappointed, but it's always nice to get, get a third option. But uh, I'll uh, give it... 10 minutes or so and then make a decision on whether to hang around even longer or pack away and move on to the next shot. So here's the first image of the walled enclosure and I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. It's exactly the look that I was going for. So I've got the field and the wall in the distance lit by bright sunlight with the whole scene sitting beneath a moody sky and the wall leads the eye nicely across the scene. The grasses add bags of texture. However, here's the other image I took in flat light about 15 minutes later. It's a totally different look. This time the wall in the distance reveals itself much more strongly and the notch and the gate is, is prominent. The image has got a totally different feel and I'm torn between the two, although I like both in equal measure. I think this is one of those scenes that can be used to create a nice series in different lighting and seasons, so I'll likely revisit. So after wrapping up at that location we headed up onto the top of Higator but it was way too blustery up there for my camera though my friend Adrian did manage to take some photographs despite the high winds. It was one of those days where I really ought to have gone with a different setup if I'd have wanted to make images up high. 
I have a couple of 35mm SLRs which I had considered taking and that would have been a more realistic option though having said that I was satisfied with my time at the walled enclosure so I was happy to treat the rest of the day as a walking trip. Back down close to the car park at Surprise View there's a lovely wooded area with silver birch which is always a tempting subject. It was also sheltered down here so the large format camera was out again. Trees are quite tricky to approach with large format because the shallow depth of field, even at really small apertures, demands the use of front tilt. The problem with this is that trees or other vertical objects dissect the plane of focus that the front tilt sets up so you have to, in most cases, not use tilt at all and rely on a very small aperture to get front to back focus. I like to embrace the shallow depth of field and in a setting like this it helps to pick out your subject and let the background fall out of focus which helps to really isolate the subject matter. It can also work really well in shots of wide vistas if you have the right foreground. This was another black and white shot I was working on here and although I took some images on Ektar I preferred the black and white images from this trip so those are the only ones that are featured in this video. I'm using Ilford FP4 Plus here rated at 100 ISO and I developed these at home in Rodinol at 1 to 25 dilution. I scan them using my digital camera and I've got a video about that which I'll link up above and also in the video description if you want to check that out. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.